Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for staying so late. Watch the last presentation. My name is Ted Krepp. I'm with Cooler Technology. I'm here with Eric James of Actionwood 360. Uh, we are here partnered together to look at strategies on how to safely transfer EV batteries once they reach end of life uh, to recycling. I think I know. Oops. Yeah, thank you. Okay, for those who are not familiar with Cooler, its core competency is in thermal runaway prevention and mitigation. We do this in several ways. Uh, we assist battery teams uh, with their designs on thermal runaway prevention. We have turnkey battery packs that we sell that are for mission critical applications that are uh, propagation resistant. Uh, we do thermal modeling, we do cell characterization testing, but also we uh, focus on battery storage and transportation. This has predominantly been in the micromobility space, uh, but with Action 360, we're looking at solutions uh, with the electric vehicle market. Sorry, I'll get it right. There you go. <laughs> um, high level overview, Action with 360, who are we, what do we do? We're a global leader in packaging multi-material, multi-continent uh, production. Uh, what I help facilitate with our organization is the design, production, prototyping of lithium battery-specific packaging and safe transportation of it. And as Shane mentioned, Eric used to work at Serba. Uh, Cooler has relationship with Serba too, with some recycling initiatives. Uh, so there's a lot of history and subject matter expertise as it relates to lithium battery recycling. Uh, to discuss this partnership in greater detail, again, Cooler is focused on thermal runaway. Uh, as you can see uh, with the pictures on the right, uh, we have the ability with uh, proprietary coolant called Thermal Runaway Shield uh, to help prevent thermal runaway at the pack level. And then to the side of that is the safe case, which I'll show videos of uh, that can fully contain thermal runaway and will be leveraged to help a solution with action wood and electric vehicles. From our side, our main focus is the exterior of the pack. So the internals coming from a partner like Cooler and actually helping with thermal mitigation is terrific. Our focus is primarily the external safe factor of getting something point A to point B. Uh, so we've seen a lot of uh, interesting charts on EV demand. Uh, certainly there's there's been some shifts to that. Uh, but this is a chart that shows that electric vehicles uh, that have been in use will start reaching their end of life towards the end of the decade uh, with exponential growth uh, thereafter. And there really is not a standard or a solution on how to transfer these EV batteries safely. And Eric has some experience there. Yeah, and to point out the uh, the previous presenter also hit on this as well. Um, there's not a, a great standard, especially when it comes to recycling these batteries and how you ship them. Um, it's mostly, uh, you know, you put them on a pallet, ship them on a truck, and it gets there. That's not necessarily the, the safest or more uh, uh, uniform fashion of it. So there's a lot of uh, ambiguity in this space. Uh, so how does Cooler do that? I have a few slides here. Uh, but the image on the right is um, our thermal runaway shield that's kind of exploded. Uh, it contains proprietary coolant. Uh, it is the core element in many of our battery pack designs and our safe case design, which we'll show in a second with a couple videos. Uh, very effective at meeting NASA level standards of safety. It's approved by the Department of Transportation for the uh, transport of damaged, defective recall batteries um, and is widely used and available today. Uh, here's a couple of videos uh, showing a full payload. This is uh, 3.2 kilowatt hours, full state of charge uh, within a safe case. Uh, I have two videos here. This is the first one. It gets kind of obscured from the smoke, but the takeaway is that the thermal runaway event is completely contained within the casing. And we're obviously trying to leverage this to electric vehicles. Um, I'll just fast forward to the next video because that's all smoky. 
but this is a, a similar test, but a thermal video. And you can see the heat signature within the case, the thermal vent going off, what's happening, but the, uh, there's no flame or affluence that exit the case. Uh, and that's cooler's design criteria. Uh, we know that 100% state of charge for electric vehicles is not in a design goal that will sell. We need something that's, that's more affordable and more consistent with the nature of those batteries that are being sent to recycling. But in general, our core competency is stopping thermal runaway. Yeah, so a little bit about why we're collaborating, as we've explained in the last couple of slides. We're working on a joint package that's more cost effective, safe for the market, and also is a standardized size uh, to ship these batteries, not just from recycling, from other stages in the life cycle. And the point of this presentation today is kind of a call to industry. We're working with several partners. We'll look at that in, in some future slides. But we're looking at getting data, at getting some understanding from the players in the market, um, their pain points in shipping batteries or receiving batteries, and how to do this in a way that, that is accepted across uh, UL or, or Department of Transportation. Um, as we showed in the video, uh, we've been able to safely contain uh, small kilowatt hours at full state of charge, NMC chemistries. Uh, our design objective for EVs is up to 200 kilowatt hours uh, at 30% state of charge at various sizes and chemistries. And what does this look like for us? Uh, our main goal by the middle of next year is to have a not, not necessarily a final product, but a workable product to meet these needs. Yes, and, and doing, in, doing so with a collaboration of regulatory bodies, UL, NFPA, uh, Department of Transportation. Um, and then Eric, one more for you. Okay. As I mentioned, it, battery recycling doesn't necessarily start at end of life. It's every step of the way. You see batteries come in directly from production scrap, prototypes, different components of it, repair. In any step of the, the battery's life cycle, they can go directly to recycling for any number of reasons. Um, it's important to keep that in mind, especially when designing or thinking about recycling batteries. You need to have a solution for that well uh, in advance, much sooner than you probably think you would. And it, as mentioned before, we are working with several companies in this space, uh, automotive OEMs, recyclers, uh, those looking for solutions um, where there's not really a good idea on how to do this safely right now. Eric mentioned before, uh, there are no standards. There have been several safety incidents. Uh, we've been getting inquiries from these companies and others. And our goal today with this time is uh, for anyone else who's interested in helping us solve this problem, um, to collaborate, to let Eric or I know. Uh, we're looking at test data. We're looking at, um, at interfacing with these regulatory agencies and, and creating a standard on how to do this safely and at a, at a cost point that's consistent with the needs of the community uh, as well as a, a package that can be reused over, over, over many cycles. Um, so that's our, our speech today, and um, I'm sure we'll get some questions in the panel, but thank you, Shane. Thank you.